Good morning. As promised, we're moving away from averages and we're moving on to um, the ways you can display data. And that'll take us through to the end of term. And it's quite a nice way to finish because I know a number of you are very uh, creative and enjoy um, doing diagrams and charts of this sort. So hopefully it will uh, go down well. Um, I am going to use squared paper today for my work. And I realise that uh, a lot of you haven't got your maths books at home. And um, so I've attached a blank piece of half centimetre squared paper, like the paper you have in your books um, to today's um, work. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to use it. Some of you might want to use uh, a computer instead or might want to do it freehand on plain paper. That's absolutely fine. Please don't worry about that at all. So. I've got a survey here. I've asked a number of boys and a number of girls uh, whether they were left or right handed. And here are my results. And I am going to display this data in four different ways. So let's meet the first two. On my left here, we've got a two way table. And on the right here, we've got a frequency tree. Now, trees crop up quite a lot in maths. You may remember doing factor trees. And um, when we do probability in year eight, we will talk about um, probability trees. But this is a frequency tree. And the word frequency we've come across already, haven't we? It's the number of people with a particular attribute. So here's my two way table. Um, I'm not going to expect you to do it for th these for this set of data. I'm going to give you a separate set of data. So feel free just to watch at the moment. So I've got 23 boys. 17 of them are right handed. So boys. 17 are right handed. And that means that six of them must have been left handed. And I had 23 boys in total. Um, girls, I had 18 girls in total. And 13 of them were right handed. So that means five of them must be left handed. So I can then do the totals for left and right handed. So in total across boys and girls, I've got 11 left handed people and I've got 30 right handed people. And then this box is a really important box. This is where your grand total goes and you can work out the number in there in two ways. You can either add up all the left handed people and all the right handed people, or you can add up all the boys and the girls. And we should get the same answer. And we do in this case, it's 41. Um, what you mustn't do is add up that number, that number, that number, and that number, giving you 82. No, it's the total of the left-handed people or the total of the boys and the girls. And it should be the same total, whichever way we go. I hope you can see how we're going to fill the frequency tree in from these numbers. I've got 41 people altogether, and 23 of those are boys and 18 of those are girls. Of the boys, six of them were left handed, 17 were right handed. And of the girls, five were left handed. My pencil's broken. Hang on a minute. Five were left handed and 13 were right handed. Now the two way table, I could have done it the other way around. I could have had left handed and right handed here and boys and girls here, it would have been the table rotated through 90 degrees. And I can do the frequency tree in two different ways as well. So I could have, with my frequency tree, have started by splitting the people into left-handed and right-handed. So that was 11 left-handers and 30 right-handers. Still 41 altogether. And the 11 left-handed people, six were boys and five were girls and the 30 right-handed people, 17 were boys, 13 were girls. And this is one of the things I love about maths is that, you know, with the same set of data, we have represented that in a number of ways, all perfectly valid. It's not that one is better than another. Um, and we can go on and represent it in even more ways. So here's another way of displaying the data. This is called a compound bar chart. And I haven't finished it yet. So I've started with my axes. I've got one big bar for the boys, 
which is goes up to 23 and one big bar for the girls which goes up to 18 and I've numbered that side axis and labeled it frequency and I have labeled my bottom axis boys bar girls bar and that's their gender now when you come to do one of your own I'll leave you to decide how you number that axis you might decide to go up in fours if you uh, have more numbers or you might go up in ones it's up to you entirely but the boys bar I need to split it up into left-handed and right-handed people so I had 17 boys who are right-handed so I'm going to split the boys bar at 17 so that means that below that line are the right-handed people and above that line are the left-handed people similarly for the girl 13 of the girls were right-handed so below that line is um, right-handed above that line is left-handed now we need a key so it's obvious which is which so I'm going to use uh, stripes for right-handed people and I'm going to use uh, dots for left-handed people And then at the side, I'll have a little key here that says, right, that's left-handed people and that's right-handed people. So I've completed my compound bar chart. Let's just review the elements again. One big bar for boys, one big bar for girls, separated. Side axis numbered and labeled frequency bottom axis labelled and overall label and then a key telling me which each section is. Now of course just like with the frequency trees I could have drawn the compound bar chart differently. I could have had one bar for left-handed people and one bar for right-handed people and those bars would have been split into boys and girls um, correspondingly and my key would have been boys and girls rather than left and right. So again I've got a choice and I'm not saying one way is better than the other, both are perfectly valid. But it doesn't stop there. So what I've got here, lastly, is a dual bar chart. Hopefully you can see what I've done. Left-handed people split into girls and boys with different labelling and a nice clear key. Right-handed people split into girls and boys using the same labelling with the same order of the bars. Side axis clearly numbered, tick marks, I didn't make that point earlier, but I like nice clear tick marks. The numbers are on the lines, not in the spaces, aren't they? Labelled frequency along the bottom. The bars are clearly labelled as well. The two bars for left-handed people go together, but then there's a gap. And again, that's important between the left-handed people and the right-handed people. And of course, I could have done a dual bar chart with boys here and a bar for left and a bar for right. And girls here with a bar for left and a bar for right with a different key here. So like all the other charts, there were two different ways of doing it. So I took that one set of data and displayed it in a two-way table, which I could have done two ways, in a frequency tree, which I did in two different ways, and then I did a compound bar chart, and I could have done that two ways boys and girls, or left-handed, right-handed, and a dual bar chart, and I could have done that two ways. And this is the great thing about maths. The same set of data can be displayed in a number of ways, and it's not that one is better than the other. You can choose a way that suits you or whatever purpose you have in mind for the data. So here's the challenge for you. So here is a different set of data. This time it's about what people do at lunchtime. Uh, now I know you could argue actually you might bring a packed lunch but also buy something in the canteen but let's just for the sake of this say people either bring a packed lunch or they use the canteen so I asked 40 boys 25 were packed lunches 15 used the canteen and 35 girls 17 brought packed lunch and the rest used the canteen and I would like you to take that data and display it in a two-way table a frequency tree a compound bar chart and a dual bar chart. Now you only have to do one of each. You don't have to do both frequency trees or 
you know, just so you're going to do four different diagrams for this one set of data. Now I've deliberately chosen bigger numbers so when you come to your bar charts you may choose to label your axes a bit differently you might find you need to go up in four so instead of going uh, four six eight you go four eight twelve maybe I'll leave you to decide make sure you've got a ruler and a nice sharp pencil and a rubber so your work uh, can be neat if you want to use the squared paper I've attached and you can print that off that's fine if you'd rather do it in a different way that's absolutely fine as well but see if you can fit it all on a single A4 sheet and then if you've got the uh, um, facilities take a photo and attach it or upload it to class charts and that means uh, I and your teachers can have a look. Good stuff. I'll leave the set of data there so you can make a note of it and I will talk to you again on Friday.